Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. <laughs> My name is Will. Thanks for tuning in again, watching or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Um, Guys, welcome. Hey. Uh, hey. It's, it's weird now that we're doing these every <clears throat> other week because it feels like a century between recordings. It does. I also felt like I wasn't 100% that we had to record today. Yeah. And then it was like, um, yeah, we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we kind of we do. do. We do, we do, we do. Um, it's okay. But we are excited to be here. We've got a little bit. We're going to kind of ramble on more of the spark for a little bit. Man, but is it, it's a slow news day at the office, It is a guys. bit of a slow news day. Uh, there is one big news item concerning well, a certain pro player <laughs> that will be right. our previous lead pro player Maybe that we're going to be talking about. Well, he's he is still technically a pro yeah, player. He's just no longer a Hall of Famer. Um, right. Yeah. Yep. But All regardless, right. we are going to kick this off as we always do with our random card of the day in three, two, one. If I can click things, uh, Sator, Sator, not Sator. That's Sator. Bad. Sator hedonist. <laughs> um, this is a, a spicy boy from Theros. <laughs> he is a two one for one colorless and a green. It says pay red, sacrifice Sator hedonist, add three red mana to your mana pool. Um, I feel like in limited. A serviceable two drop, and that's about it. Yeah, he's it's fine. It's not amazing. He was played a lot in um, a few standard decks until... Was he? I don't remember. He was. So a few standard decks until um, the Devotion train really took over. Oh, um, yeah, true. So, I mean, he helped out because the uh, red-green, like, stompy creatures deck. I forgot. Red-green monsters, maybe, is what they mm. called it. Uh, relied a lot on Hedonist and other cards to pump them into their big things. Well, I guess Monstrosity was a yep. thing, and so exactly. yeah, you sack yeah. into mostly for Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, some other big stuff too. Um, so yeah, the this card was around a lot. Uh, cool. I think they also put it in the um, there's like a Graveyards Matter deck in in around that time where huh. they used like Night Howler, oh, uh, oh. a bunch of other cards to yeah, fuel yeah. the yard and yeah. Um, so this just helped. Forget. Yeah, yeah. Helped fuel it. Uh, it helped move you along and in, in, in some other things. If I'm not mistaken, I can't remember if I don't it or remember not. what deck it was. But yeah, no. Um, I think regardless, though. Yeah. I mean, it did hit a few standard decks. Mm -hmm. I do think in limited, it's like a perfectly okay two drop. It's not anything yeah. super special, but like if you're in green red, I don't see that there's a huge problem with it. You know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah. I don't think it's good anywhere else, obviously, because you can't use the ability unless you're in green red. Right, that's um, the thing. So, so it's like kind of specific. Definitely. But, uh, um, yeah. I think in that deck, it's a fine two drop because it does. I mean, it does ramp you right. Like that's the idea. And so, if you are right. playing like a uh, creatures matters, you know, green red deck, this is perfect. Go yeah. for it. So it's fine. It seems like a very in specific decks. It seems like a very necessary card. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is yeah. that that's perfectly fine. And other than that, though, I don't think it's an all that special card. Right. Right. By any means. I agree. Um, um, yeah. This. I mean, this effect you think historically has been very good. Like it's oh, yeah. been on. It's on your rituals, and that's it's the you ritual want. effect, which is great. Right. I mean, you see it abused in a lot of like blue red decks or yeah. storm decks, things like that. But in a creature based deck yeah. it's just not at its best and that's the right? thing is those decks would never hit touch green yeah, so it, exactly. do it doesn't it doesn't matter for the uh uh any greater implications beyond like uh niche corner decks exactly so, um yeah i think it's fine yep it gets like i don't know two crispy planeswalkers two fibble thips out of out of five <laughs> <laughs> Two out of five fibble thips. I yeah. like that. Uh, speaking of new fibble thip, by the way, yeah, a lot of a lot of potential out of that card that's been you coming think? up. Oh gosh, yeah, so many decks playing with it. Um, I don't like his art. I'm gonna be honest. His art's. F I mean, it's fine. It's not. It's not the fibble thip I love. What do you mean? Fibble thip's a cutie, and then his art, he looks funky. Yeah, because he's a homunculus. Yeah, the first fibble thip's a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> like baby he's he's a sweet little boy and then this fibble thip looks like no shrek's ugly cousin don't that's very mean of you to say dude look it up right now no i know what he looks like yeah he he looks like a, an ogre from warcraft he looks like that's so mean look i just you can just type in scribefall you don't actually I don't know have to where the bar anything. is there it the is the thing that says search for magic cards. i didn't know um where the bar was. Well, I guess we'll harp on... How do you spell it? Uh, L? 
Is it not? No, no, no. Is there not an eye? No, there's not. There you go. That's right. No, oh, he looks okay. adorable. Okay, so I had a... Yeah, no, nah, that's too hyper-realistic. Like, so look at this fibble that was freaking eyes popping out like an ugly pug. <laughs> and then... <laughs> He's sad. He's so lost. Yeah, dude. And then look at this fibble thing. It's adorable. Nobody, I'm realizing nobody can see what we're looking at, but that's totally fine. No, it's... It's all right. He's a little pudge buffing in this one. I know. Look at this one, Look bro. Look at his eye. It takes up his entire face. Nah, dude. Look at... He's just... He's a sweet little boy. He's... He's a sweet... I mean, he's adorable. He's a sweet little boy. He's, I like him. I like him. There is a lot of combo decks that are pulling off some stuff with that. And not even just combo decks, but like just value decks that like him. Sure. Sure. Explain how... What's what's your fave out of them? Um, There's like a Simic like neo form deck where you like chain up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so Did we talk about that last time i, feel I like think we, we might mentioned have. it but like basically you chain up uh as you would with like a birthing pod deck and so you go up by cmc cost uh a lot of times you like turn one lanoir elf into turn two neo form or something like that you yeah. can get a fibble tip you get card draw off of it and then it's just like added in protection because it just gets shuffled back into your deck a lot of the time yeah. and so it's just it's one of those reoccurring kind of themes that not only draws you cards, but also fits into the synergy of the deck. And so it's just, it's really fun. There's also a couple where, like, you can, uh, what is it, Finale of Devastation, yeah. where, like, you can play one early for two and then just pull out a Fibble Tip and then draw mm. two cards off of it and, like, all this. It's it's silly. Um, He's a silly guy. It's, it's a fun little card, though. I like it. He's actually pretty oh. good, I have found. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I'm into that. He is just a, a one one for two, but the card draw is really good. Um, Heck yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming out of War of the Spark that we're seeing. Um, I, I've i been playing a good bit on Arena, which you guys have probably seen. We've posted a lot of videos on it, testing out a lot of decks. A lot of them I'm finding mm -hmm. from Aether Hub. Some good, some not. Uh, the latest one was bad. Which was that? It was Simic Aggro. Uh, so okay. it took the mono blue aggro and turned it into mm. green blue aggro to so put the crisis in no uh, oh, i'm sorry exactly um so <laughs> i stole the list i mean i net decked it that's what i've been doing just to test out some of these cards sure but, like it played a lot off of like ixalan cards so it had like okay. deep root champion uh, as like a one one for two that gets counters every time you pay or you play a non creature spell, right? And it does run some like callous dismissal, which is a good War of the Spark card where for two you bounce a non land permanent and then you amass one, and that's okay. pretty good tempo because you do get not only a creature token but you also get the tempo play of bouncing something. Yeah, and because it's only a two drop, you can usually play it pretty early, which yep. means you're you're doing pretty well with that card. Uh, but then it just plays stuff like Hadana's Climb. And stuff that like throws counters on everything. It does play the yeah. curious obsession with like Pateramander and stuff like that just to be able to draw cards. But the kicker with all of this plays 14 lands. 14 lands. Now Doesn't I get like that's in an aggro deck. Well, so it plays open the gates uh, and then uh, one other like search for creature or land card and I can't remember the name of it. Um, but basically it like digs pretty hard. And so the idea is you play a deep root champion, you dig for lands really hard, and then you pump up the deep root champion. The problem with that is you have to have lands to start that whole process. <laughs> right. So sure. Yeah. I found myself mulliganing to at least get one land like every time. And that it's just sucks. not ideal. Yeah. Um, and some of the lands, like you do play Hinderland Harbor. And so like if you okay. end up with, you play it as a four of, so you have basically yeah. 10 shots, 10 lands that actually that come, come in into play cheese yeah it's it's pretty bad it seems like it, i mean so that seems like it, it needs some adjusting it would be fun it does need some work but the, and a hydro crisis or four yeah exactly if you're gonna okay so you take a, a winning deck mono yeah. blue right yeah yeah which is a winning deck yeah and then you give it green which is taking away from what is historically successful yeah why not put in the best card in standard right now yeah because it is those colors yeah i mean that's exactly what i would think but yeah. I, again, I was just trying to test out lists and sure, stuff. But sure, sure, like, and I'm not criticizing bad. not you, just the, the oh, no, deck's you design. Can. It's terrible. Um, but yeah, yeah. So good. 
Um, but we did play out uh, a couple of the other decks that we played with. Uh, I ba- I built my own Sultai list, mm. kind of playing off of the themes of the Sultai decks that we've already seen, Hydrocrisis being an obvious include. Yeah. But then, and I was talking to you about this, playing cards like Casualties of War from War of the Spark, that card is just such a big swing in yeah. your favor every single time you play it. And I know it's like you're not necessarily going to get every single activation off of it. You're not yeah, going to. probably not. You're, most of the time you're not. But uh, even if you hit two things, which is mm. very likely all the time, two to three things, and you're all of a sudden in the lead of the game. And Heck it's yeah. like, oh, it feels so good, uh, especially with so many Planeswalkers running around. A lot of times you'll find something there. Uh, usually a creature and a land are pretty, pretty much givens as well. Yeah. I um, mean, I think being able to hit a creature, a land, and something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you probably like get your mana's worth. Oh yeah, you know, uh, and especially definitely if it's a planeswalker. Yeah, but I think 100%. At, at least those two and then some yeah. other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a bit slow at six mana, but when you're running a Sultai list, you've got like growth spiral, you've got options mm-hmm. for ramp Lanoir elves, and so it's usually pretty easy to ramp it out pretty quickly. Yeah, and if the quicker you can get that casualty of war off, the further you set the opponent behind because right. not only at the very minimum you're going to hit a land. And so, like, you just set them back a turn right off the bat, no matter what. Exactly. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's such a big hit. Um, really, really fell in love with that card a lot. I do want to test more with it. Uh, I played a Grixis Bolus list uh, that okay. played the new Bolus. Yeah. Uh, had some pretty good luck with that, and it was very, very fun. It played a lot of new, like, War of the Spark cards, and a lot of it was a mass-based. Okay. And so... It did not play the old like M19 bolus because okay. uh, I have seen a lot of lists that run both. Uh, sure. But this one just ran the new mm-hmm. one as like a three of uh, as a pretty big finisher, obviously. But then it also had a lot of amass. Uh, Enter the God Pharaohs is a huge card right now. That card is insane. The value you get off of that is great. Um, there's also there was the widespread brutality. Uh, mm-hmm. which is a really really nice card especially if you've already got a token out it becomes like a four mana give me a huge creature and wipe your board it's like yeah. the the insane value in this set is like ridiculous it's, right it's so good yeah yeah um but yeah so a lot of like just a variety of decks but a lot of different fun stuff and a lot of these cards from more of the spark i'm i'm learning are pretty pretty awesome yeah pretty pretty awesome um, i think you said it well oh i know i did do you um, um so do you see <laughs> do you foresee a mass becoming a viable like constructed strategy then if, i do is it- um so i definitely do and i think it can play out in a variety of ways because some of the amass decks that mm-hmm. i've started to see and this is only in the last couple of days so i don't have like a full list in mind but i have seen there was i know in particular one deck that i played against uh, that might have been Grixis, but was at the very minimum blue black, hmm. and they were a mass kind of aggroy. Okay. Um, so it played a lot of the, the like just a mass creatures, and so it would just play out a bunch of stuff, get two value like two for one basically everything because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're getting extra mass stuff, and then just be able to swing in for a ton. That deck is pretty sweet, though I think potentially not long term as good as something like the Grixis control list, where okay. the amass is a good way to like gain extra value but it's not the key ingredient to the deck if that makes sense like it's added bonus it's a great way to threaten planeswalkers and a control deck in particular because you're gonna have the creature hate built in right cast down things like that the widespread brutality is a great one uh but having the amass token then left behind after that just means you're able to threaten opponents planeswalkers really really well makes sense um makes sense and I do think, and we talked about this, the Planeswalkers versus a mass in limited aspect mm-hmm. of it, that is such a good way to balance it. And so yeah, I'm absolutely. pretty stoked to see how it does pan out in Constructed because okay. I do think it's it's pretty viable. Cool. For sure. That was the that was one of my biggest questions leaving uh, the limited format like yeah. I did is, was a mass good enough to be in Constructed sure. um, as a mainstay this season or is it just kind of really good for limited and, yeah. and, and not much else but yeah, yeah. okay yep neat um good a lot of cool stuff running around though uh we'll keep bringing up uh arena a little bit as well so we'll be testing decks i know <laughs> for sure i'm going to be testing as much as possible yeah um i've got a couple decks that i still want to test one in particular yeah. is the the just guy super friends super um, friends that deck looks insane we'll name it so good it's the end game deck it's the end game deck. whatever it takes <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> so yeah. I'm excited to test that. Uh, and then I just want to start building some of my own. Not only I'm learning a lot from the Aether Hub list uh -huh. and just pulling from that, seeing what cards are good, what cards aren't. Uh, but I think there's there's some really cool potential in this yeah, set. There's a lot of fun stuff. Um, Soren Aggro as well as Feather Aggro are both doing pretty well. Soren Aggro and yeah. Feather Aggro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A um, lot of interesting stuff there, but huh. those are the two like big aggro decks that I'm seeing right now. Okay. Um, for mm -hmm. sure. So really interesting though. Really like War of the Spark. That's the takeaway. So, yeah. Also, Spark Double uh, is oh, such a dirty card. I feel like Spark Double, Spark Double is the card that makes a lot of it like makes certain cards the like the best cards yeah. in the set. Oh yeah. Uh just having two planeswalkers. And they they're the same planeswalker. Is like, like what I've found is in the Sultai list that I made, I run yeah. like a two of Spark Double. And okay. I run Tamio because it's a great way to bring anything back sure. that you could possibly need. And also just dig for stuff. Yeah. And so what I've found is like you Tamio dig four cards yeah if, whether or not you find the card you're looking for if you do find it great if you don't who cares all of a sudden all these options are now in your graveyard so then you can spark double and then minus the spark double tamio and pull out whatever of the options you oh need. yeah so it doesn't matter like and so what i've found in particular with casualties of war is if i can get one in the graveyard yeah i can just keep replaying the casualties of war every single turn wow and so then you just start like you just start dr dwindling resources like crazy that Dude, teamed with uh, Davril, which is I've found to be a really good card in that deck as well, uh -huh. and Thought Erasure, all the hand destruction stuff. Um, you oh, you just take them ooh. off of everything. That's disgusting. It's hundred percent just resource denial, and it's great. So God. Good. yeah, it's a that's, dirty deck. That's gross. It's so sweet. I love, <laughs> I love it. it. It's so good. Wow. Okay. Turn one, two. Like, I think I run in that list two duress, two divest. Uh -huh. uh, so that way I can kind of hit either side of things. Even if I whiff, it's like kind of okay because I get the information. Sure. Uh, turn two Thought Erasure. I run four of Thought Erasure. Uh, and then like two or three Davril okay. for like added bonus. And then Spark Double on Davril means that they're discarding two a turn yeah. if I need to do that. Or turn four, I just Tameo and then start pulling the resources that you need to get. Davril. And so it's like... Are you, do you mean the Black Planeswalker? Yeah. You mean Derevi? No, it's Davril. Is it Davril? Davril. Davril. Yeah. Davril. Is that how it's spelled? D A V. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From. I don't remember how to spell it, but he's yeah, from right here. Kaladesh. That's Davril. Right. He's not. He. We've not seen him before. He's new. Is he not? I thought no, he's he from Kaladesh. New. If I'm not mistaken, he is new. Oh, he is in the story from yeah, Kaladesh. Yeah. He's the um. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. not seen him on a card before. But yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He was one of the new ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but he's basically eight rack, but or not eight rack, but the rack on a card, and it's really sweet. Um, I really like yeah. him a lot. Are on a planeswalker. So yeah, no, he's fun. He, he uh, teamed with some other hand destruction means you just dude, resource deny dirty. him pretty quick. Yeah. If you just cut Man. them off of everything, then you're good. And not only that, but you're a lot of the times ramping into uh, the tamios and the casualties and stuff like that. So. So what deck is that in? Is that like a... That's my Simic, or not Simic, excuse me, uh, Sultai list. Okay. Um, so it's very similar. I mean, it, it's reminiscent of the original Sultai list that we saw before War of the Spark. I mean, it does have Hydroid Crisis. Uh, it has Growth Spiral. All the, like, general stuff that works. Thought Erasure is still in there. Right, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. like, that teamed with a little extra discard on the hand, and then the Casualties of War with Tamiyo in particular means that you can just reoccur that resource denial stuff. And so, like, not only are you destroying their hand, you're also destroying their land base, which means anything they draw, they're less likely to be able to play. Right. Um, you're hitting them for two damage a turn if they only have one or less. You know, with Davril, you're hitting them for damage every turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Spark Double just means that you're very, very flexible to be able to say, okay, they're drawing way too many cards. I need to copy Davril and just start discarding a bunch of them. Yeah. Or... I need to copy Tamio and just have all the answers that I could possibly need for whatever they're playing. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And so like that flexibility and then teamed with reoccurring that casualties of war just means that they're like, they're kind of, you don't, uh, you can't hard lock somebody out unless you just genuinely hit all of their lands every time. Sure. But like you can really, really do some damage. Wow. Um, mean. 
Yeah, I had good luck with that one in the uh, arena. I like it though. Yeah, it's sweet. It's really sweet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see you. I see yeah, you. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Yeah. So that all that being said, War of the Spark is hitting things on a high note, in my opinion. It's it's doing some really yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, I with haven't standard. seen like a lot of complaints from. I, funny enough, I I have a a buddy who, uh, says he didn't like the set and is like whining about it but he has not played with anything from the set yeah. no limited uh will not deck build with it yeah he's like it just looks like a bad set it's not a bad set i thought right the planeswalkers being an uncommon i didn't like but other than that it's but fun. playing with them i'll say playing that with them i'm served pretty well so i can't be too mad yeah i'm not i'm not unhappy that they're here no not you know all. i think that they're um, i think they're a very balanced card which is yeah. weird to say about yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of sets um because we can complain about so much stuff on magic cards and yeah. magic players always do but like uh it seems very fair these uncommons especially that yeah. have only have minus abilities yeah yeah you know um i don't know they're just it's just very tuned i like it yeah, a lot it does seem well play tested and things like that so i'm glad that it it turned out the way it did agreed i'm pretty happy I agree. with it um things that i'm not happy about um Oh. We'll move on to probably the thing we should have first talked about, but no, well, we uh, it's we're putting it off. Uh, so it sucks for anybody that does not know what is going on. Uh, first of all, I don't know how you don't, but well, uh, Yuya Watanabe, who is or has been up until this point a pro player for over ten years, if I'm not mistaken, yes, uh, hey, quite a, a while, inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, well respected throughout the community for quite a while, uh, yeah. has. Uh, as of last week at the Mythic or whenever the Mythic Championship was, right. uh, he was caught with allegedly marked sleeves. Um, right. And it has been already, the, I mean, they've assessed everything. They've already taken the steps to... to it is official. It is official. The, they have banned him for many sanctioned events for six months, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I thought it was 30 months. Oh, I thought it was six. I heard no, six. No, it's... A long time. Okay. Originally, it was definitely six. It's like but, three years. Okay. Well, uh, fair enough. Uh, but they've months, also yeah. removed him from the Hall of Fame. Yep. Um, Stripped him of his accolades. Yes. Uh, so, Will, how does that make you feel? Uh, so, it's kind of like... I, I'm torn a little bit. Yeah. Only reason is... Um, Watanabe and his uh, sponsors his team really mm -hmm. are adamant yeah that it's uh not true yeah or at least i'll say this in the beginning initially we're adamant yeah um and then when wizards announced it's we'll call it a ruling mm -hmm. um his punishment uh what watanabe tweeted um like asking for proof really yeah. uh which i don't it wasn't so much that he like he wasn't saying he didn't do it at that yeah, point, yeah, yeah. right? It was where's the proof? We talked to wizards and asked them for proof. Yeah, and they don't have it, or well, he didn't say that. He said they wouldn't give it to him. Yeah, um, which is more suspect to me. It is a bit the the hard thing. I, the thing I struggle with, and look, at the end of the day, I don't care who you are. You can be a hall of famer. You can be a kid that just started playing and got lucky and ended up in a tournament somewhere. Yeah. But if you cheated. I am very adamant that you are in the wrong. They should well, take yeah. any punishment that they see fit, whatever, you know, within reason. But they, they, if it is true, I think they did the right thing. Um, I think so too. So it's yeah difficult for me only because I have respected Watanabe for yeah, so long got, as a pro player. He was one of my, my favorites to watch, definitely. He came across to me, and again, it's not like I know this guy. I just mean through watching him play watching his post commentary on games things like that it seemed to me like he was a very uh, humble. an advocate humble an advocate for fair play that kind of a he thing he seemed like a genuine just like he just seemed like a get, good dude. player right and he was very good for whatever reason he decided or somebody decided that he may have cheated and so yeah so it's just difficult to believe a little bit w well but watanabe and his teams like counter argument to all mm. this is that he's being framed by a judge right it, literally that which yeah, seems yeah. A little, and i did hear that that seems a little far-fetched though absolutely like from <laughs> all the things that 
I've seen, like you said, of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how he would have upset a judge so much that That's they would my, want to yeah, get him. Yeah, yeah. You know, unless um, I mean, unless there's a a third layer that we don't know about that's which personal is, i guess possible sure I just, sure it's, it's it's possible but i don't and here's the other thing um one judge doesn't necessarily like uh doesn't like swing the axe you yeah. know one, clearly enough people thought that this was legitimate that they made this ruling yeah not Do you see o- what i'm saying like it absolutely. wasn't just one person absolutely and not only that but uh it wasn't from one tournament that, that this yeah, like, they did look at past uh, recorded footage and things like that, and right. they they said, at least from my understanding, the only mm-hmm. thing that I know that they said was that um, based on that, as well as the evidence at this tournament, right. that's what they were making their decision on. Right. So that does lead me to believe that they found something questionable uh, with previous footage. Yeah. They did not release, again, to my understanding, they didn't release what that actually was or right. any evidence supporting that that's just what i've heard right so i don't think we've mentioned it yet but specifically the way they said he's cheated Mm. is um he had marked sleeves for his tron lands he was playing tron yeah um so uh it was correct me if i'm wrong he had different marks allegedly yeah for each of the different tron lands right and he marked three of the four for each okay uh which again (laughs) <clears throat> kind of i mean i i read this somewhere else as well if you were gonna cheat that's kind of the smartest way to do it you didn't mark all of them so like maybe it's it's just a fluke or something like that but i suppose i, I don't know i mean yeah <laughs> there was but like it it's very very difficult in my opinion to to really take a huge side on this i feel like if he cheated and they're right then they yeah. made the right call it's just like there's so much evidence to support kind of both sides of this in my opinion um no i disagree to that um do you? i honestly don't think watanabe's got a, a leg to stand on well he doesn't I, that's fair he has from my understanding just a huge respect from the pro players as well as anybody else watching that makes me think okay why would somebody like this cheat i guess so that's it's not evidence but it's like he's got the backing a little bit um, well now a lot of people i guess are turning against that but that just seems to be the case before well yeah i mean i think if uh, you need to be able to prove your innocence a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, you no, know what absolutely, I mean. Absolutely. Um, and well, I guess that's kind of a really flagrant thing to say. Um, innocent until proven guilty, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's kind of like I don't think Wizards would strip a player who's been playing for a decade of yeah. all of the stuff. If of it, all of the support that they gave the game, I don't think that they would just take it away. Right. Quickly, if if, it, really if there was it. any, if there was a shred of like, well, maybe not. Yeah. If there is enough that a Hall of Famer who has yeah. been who has won tournaments and been acclaimed for a long time is yeah. no longer, then I think there there is probably enough to say that. I would. I mean, I certainly would hope so. But yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's the thing is like, I don't th- even think they need to be able to prove it to anybody else. I think if they have, like assuaged without a reasonable doubt that mm-hmm. yeah that's very possible here's why i mean that's fair i don't i don't I know don't it's know. just kind of tough to watch from for a player like you yeah <laughs> sure um, uh, and I, I guess that's why i struggle with it a little bit but yeah. like i mean i'm i fully support the the stance that they take if they're willing to if they if they have the evidence to support it then i'm totally fine with it it just yeah. it's tough because it's you yeah and like sure. for a long time he was one of the like pro players that was really at the top of the game and like genuinely just it seemed like uh, a reasonable person and someone who sure. took the game very seriously um well yeah i mean and so i don't know why he would have cheated which kind of sucks to win well that's I why just i mean, do it you know i just mean like if he's at the top of the i don't know no, maybe I, that's how I, he got there I don't, <laughs> well i mean i know I, I I hear you. Yeah, but um, it's I'm not sure. So like marking your lands, your Tron lands, which yeah. in Tron is that like I don't know. That's helpful. Helpful, but how much? Pretty helpful because if you have an expedition map or something like that out, and you're about to go search for one, but you know it's now on top of your deck, then you can just not search for it. And I guess you would know which one it is. And you know which one it is based on the market. So you can go get a yeah. different one. So I do think it, I mean, 
if it was marked, it would be helpful for sure. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I guess you could take back footage from all his games and games from other Tron players. Yeah. See, what statistically, does he made. get Tron more than other people? Yeah. yeah and yeah. that'd be a pretty good indicator. That would. Like, I think if he about <laughs> 20 or more, like 20 to 30% more often got Tron, like, yeah, maybe so. On clock. It's hard to quantify that number for sure, but yeah, I would definitely Well, agree. so not really. Well, so you think about how fast you can possibly get Tron? No, I mean, the margin as to where it would be suspicious, I think. I mean, like, well, sure do you see what I'm I think saying? that's a little subjective, you're yeah, right. Yeah. But like, um, I think you can easily quantify how more, how more often he actually got it than anybody else for yeah. sure. But like, and the other question I have too is if they looked at past footage... Did they find him cheating with other decks? Because obviously he didn't play Tron for the, his entire career. Oh, that's true. So they like, didn't, what they other didn't things? Say. Yeah, they didn't say, and that's part of why I wish they would at least say something about the previous footage. Yeah. Like again, you're right. If they they know that they can prove it, then that's fine. But it's just like it would be nice for the community to have some sort of closure yeah. on it a little bit. I think. Do you think that Wizards? If they have proof, which again, I'm pretty sure that they sure they, they have. I don't think they would have made the call without it. And do do you think that they would ever like go public with it and say this is what it is? Um, I think if there's enough backlash, they could. But we've mm. honestly seen how Wizards deals with backlash, and they usually just ignore it. So yeah, it could be possible they just don't feel the need. Yeah, and um, I kind of I kind of respect that more. I believe. Simpl I do. I think it it like it keeps them above a lot of it. It does, but I do think some sense of transparency is worth noting. Sure. Well, uh, and to that point, Yuya did tweet, uh, and his team tweeted photos of his deck. Yeah. Right? The deck yeah, that they yeah. looked at specifically. Right. And, I mean, the corners of the sleeves are bent. They are. Which is, if you're marking a sleeve, yeah. how you have to do it. Yeah. Um. Is that, like, is that enough? Is that... Or, I think that teamed with previous footage could be enough, but they have to be able to, again, if they don't have that, if they looked at 10 years of him playing the game and nothing seems suspicious, yeah, and then all of a sudden at one tournament, he comes up with sleeves that look bent, I don't think that's enough to go on. Yeah. And I think Wizards is smart enough to know that, but I think that they wouldn't have made this call based on only that. And sure, so that's, I agree. that's where I, I just wish they would have some sense of transparency. And I'm not like, I don't want to bash wizards for taking the stance of we're not going to discuss it. They got to defend their game. Yeah. And that's fine. Like I get it. It's just because it's such a top level player, it would be nice for the transparency. If it was just some random person like at a tournament, like, yeah, you should treat everybody the same way. I get it. But when there's potential like for, pretty big backlash like you do have to understand that there's a different level of to an announcement like this there's yeah. a little bit of a different level of uh of potential for stuff like that yeah so and from his so he tweeted about it again yeah. and released the and released the the pictures uh, he a statement on the pictures this is interesting uh he says i honestly don't know how my urzatran lands became urzatron lands became marked so i don't know the exact reason things turned out this way mm. uh i think maybe it's because i tutored for them a lot for my deck this requires touching the cards more mm. and the repeated exposure might have caused damage to them giving them distinguishable marks um that being said okay so no i'm more now especially more firmly in the camp of wizards yeah uh because simply tutoring for things yeah i don't think that that's viable that's a really no, piss poor that's shitty excuse yeah, it is yeah damn that's fine that's we the already, one that's the one for me we already messed it up it's fine we messed it up like weeks ago no i know we're not <laughs> oh no no i don't oh, care about okay, that yeah. i don't care about that fuck it but <laughs> What's an obvious thing? Oh, I don't know how they got like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's because I touch my cards. You touch cards. You know. Bullshit. Yeah, no, my no, cards are fine. Uh, I will say that sometimes, like, shuffling your cards a certain way can screw up your sleeves. Yeah, but it would screw up more than just Tron Lanes. Correct. That's my thing. Correct. Um, so, no, I, I don't support that. I think that that's a poor excuse for sure. Yeah, I so, think that, that like, weak defense is, yeah. is enough for me to say that it, it's true. Yeah. I mean, fair. 
Dang. I mean, I don't think that they would have made the call. Like you said, I don't think they would have made the call if there was a <laughs> shroud of doubt. And right. so the only thing I would like from Wizards is a little bit of like, again, not that they need <laughs> to prove themselves. I don't think they need to. And I do agree there is some merit to staying above all of it. But when it is a pro player that you're kicking out of the Hall of Fame, yeah, you better have a good reason. That's all I'm saying. That's a pretty good reason to me. Yeah. It is a good reason. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying that, like, in general, if they're you, saying you that they looked like, at the the know. previous evidence and things like mm-hmm. that, I just want to know specifics as to why. That sure. is all. And again, not out of like me feeling like they have to prove themselves. Yeah, I think they probably made the right call. I just, yeah. I just think that it would be a a good transparency action. Sure. Um, but that's just me. Regardless, you is out yep. for a little while at least. So, well, for three years. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Though, I mean, he can still play, like, arena and stuff, so. Yes. It's not like they can take him away from that. you cannot park your cards. Yeah. Um, or yeah. can you? <laughs> <laughs> can you code in the cards that you'd like? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. It just sucks to see that from especially such a high-level player. Um, yeah. That feels well, bad. And a well-respected player, at least on yeah. my end. I, I looked up to him in well, terms of a pro player. So. And, it, and it kind of, like, raises a few questions we can talk about. Like, yeah. I've been playing Paper Magic like face to face with opponents for a while, yep. um, and other card games. And there have been times when people have done like have cheated in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's a question of like how do you handle it usually? Um, and there's a lot of times I'm gonna be honest. Like there's a guy in particular who I used to play with mm. against at a card shop who, uh, when he was losing a lot of times would like (laughs) he would do this thing where he'd either like drop an extra land (laughs) like did i play my land this turn and drop it yeah or like did i draw a card this turn yeah draw an extra card now it helped that he wasn't very good that yeah um that's (laughs) but i mean it got it got to a point where like i i judged him like i called judge yeah yeah uh which you should do that's the thing is like I was very lenient. Yeah. Oftentimes because I beat him frequently, but yeah. But you shouldn't feel bad for calling a judge on someone who is right. clearly cheating. Right. Right. I think that it ta- it takes it takes a integrity and fun out of the game if you know someone's. Well, yeah, that's the, like you hate to be the the like the narc of all this. Yeah. Like there's a stigma there, but like a bit, but like protect your game. But I that's guess. the thing. Like the game suffers when there are people that are getting away with cheating. Absolutely. Uh, that's just a fact. I think Chris yeah, Bakula yeah. has been such a huge advocate for like getting cheaters out of the game. Right. And I fully back his position on it. Like you know if you what? cheat, you're done. Like cuz th- Chris, yes. So Chris like crusaded against a lot of cheaters and he stuff. He did. But back in the day it was like super easy to cheat. People did right. it all the time. Cuz deck ch- deck checks were really lenient and yeah. kind of crappy. Yeah, yeah. However, he like would still say a lot of the time that there are still professional players who are cheating. One out of three is what I have heard. Is on not necessarily from him, but I've heard a lot of pro players are cheating, and I don't know. What? Yeah, so maybe well, this is the first step against some of that. And there's there's also not only with the cards themselves ways of cheating. There's like, and this is kind of not necessarily cheating, but it is a really crappy way to play. Mm. So my friends got like this tinfoil hat theory about the KCI band. No, about how people, if they saw that they were playing against KCI, would just go to time. Ah, uh, like oh, I see what you they mean. They would stall the game out, force yeah, time. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's, that's it's crappy. Shitty. But yeah. Jerry Thompson, like one year, got called for time a lot. He was mm-hmm. playing standard at the time. He wasn't playing against a a deck, but a uh, um a combo deck. But it was like confusing as to why he wasn't playing faster Mm -hmm. because he wasn't playing a very complicated deck it was the the uh blue red like uh elemental deck where niv visit stuff you flip things whatever so like he went to time a lot yeah jerry is a really good guy by the way i didn't know this um He's the one, though, that didn't go to Worlds, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He you is. You were against him on that for a long time. What I didn't know is that his last tournament winnings, though, he donated all the money to Planned Parenthood. That's he awesome. Took all his winnings and gave it away. That's So, cool. like, for me, initially, I'm like, Jerry just likes the money. That's, that's 
crap. He just wants more money to win more. Ooh. But obviously but that's it, not the he case. He gave it yeah. all away. So. I don't necessarily agree with the way he handled the world thing. but I yeah. don't, but like I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't that know. is cool. But anyway, all that to say is that like pro players have a little gamesmanship. Yeah. Is what we'll call it. There's a little bit of a like stretching and bending of the rules a little bit. Uh, I think full stop at when it's not when it's information you shouldn't have when you're changing mm-hmm. the game to win hate it yeah when you're drawing an extra card that's just against the rules yeah that's just wrong if you if you know what cards are in your deck and where they are like that's no. wrong right uh, going to time because you're playing a crappy deck that's just meta gaming i guess isn't it like <laughs> a bit and it's just kind of like a dick move oh it is a dick move like a hundred percent but in their technically defense, it's not illegal and the fuckers are playing KCI, yeah, so I mean, stick it to them anyway. <laughs> it is kind of interesting. But regardless, um, yeah, obviously cheaters are bad. And yeah. if you get cheated, which it sounds like it's pretty evident that he did, then he's out. And I'm glad yeah. for that. Um, yeah. it's I, I It sucks, but it's probably it's for the best, clearly. Yeah. But it just sucks. That's I came all. into this talk unsure of my position, but yeah. I think I am I found a firmament. Good. I'm so that, happy. Um, screw that little dude. Well, uh, he could have a, a, an illustrious career of um, the before picture in a proactive commercial, though. So <laughs> it, it's not all bad for him. <laughs> he could still make it out there. On that note, let's move it on to our crack of packs. Uh, so, as always, guys, these are sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Their Facebook group is linked down below. We went there for pre-release. It was an awesome time. Heck Highly yeah. suggest checking them out. Go oh, follow the page. Do all yeah. that jazz. Uh, we are on the hunt for Nicol Bolas. We haven't decided what happens when you get it first or when I get it first, but we'll figure that out. So uh, yeah. Pick your pack, buddy. Um, I got to go with uh, ripping pepperonis. Because he's super dead. Gideon. Yeah, he's extra dead. Um, I got a Teferi pack. Let's see. I still, out of the like four boxes of this that I have opened, I have not gotten a Nicol Bolas. Really? Yeah. And still not. But I did get Finale of Devastation, there which is go. real sweet. Um, Very cool. Probably a safe pick, to be honest. That card's kind of broken. Um, just being able to pull out anything is great. Yeah. So I think that's definitely my pick. I've got a couple of okay things. but uh, Vivian's Arpo is mine. Oh, I love that card, actually. I do, too. I don't love it for limited. No, um, but... Or Dovin, which is my oh, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Mine's was, mine was mine's Davril. Was, <laughs> mine's was Davril. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> uh, so, um, not like a crazy good pack here. Vraska's finisher is okay. Yeah. Um, I like it for three. Uh, it's a three, two, three. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature or walker and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. That's pretty it's good, good. removal. It's a three, two. That's a solid pick, I think. Yeah. Um, the rest of the, there's no real removal other than that in the pack. Sure. Um, Sarkon's Catharsis is in here. It'll get rid of a Planeswalker. Um, I honestly like a permanent more that could do that potentially. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, awesome. I do really love opening this set. It's always fun. But uh, it's sweet. We'll continue this uh, the Crackapack series and the hunt for Nickel Bolus as we continue on uh, with War of the Spark. I'm yes. really excited about it. So um, yeah. Is there anything else though, that you want to mention before we head out? I played a little magic with my little brother today, the youngest of them. It go well? Ten-year-old. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I taught him. So he, this is, he and my dad uh, have, like, gotten into magic without me. Oh. Which is uh, is great. Is awesome. Yeah, that awesome. They're, like, genuinely interested in it. Um, They're getting a lot of the rules wrong. Oh. It's kind of like it seems like laziness a little yeah. bit on their yeah, part, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it's a little bit like painful to to see it. Yeah, to go yeah. through it all, which is like okay, you teach them, you get them, you make them better. Everyone learns, everyone has a good time. It's cool, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like not that yeah. complicated. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's tricky, um, well, but it is cool. Um, it was, I mean, I'm glad that they're playing. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it was little bro's idea to, to buy a, a toolkit, a few packs, and make oh, some decks. There it so is. I was like, let's do it. Let's a good starting point. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. I made him a um, a green red like stompy real deck. real big stompy thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I played a black white um like aristocrats kind of thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I thought he'd smash me. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of stuff has trample. Yeah. But um, he did not smash you. Well, nah, and I feel kind of bad. <laughs> but like, learn the hard way. Yeah, he, <laughs> this is the thing. People shuffle your deck. Yeah. He didn't shuffle his deck at all. Oh. He just put the lands on the bottom, gave it like well, a few cuts, yeah, and like was like, all right, it's time to go. Yeah, he kind of fucked up there. That's okay. For sure. He'll learn. He'll learn. That's, That's awesome. Right. I'm stoked about that. That's really good. Yeah, it's cool, though. Um, um, I'm going to throw out a catch. quick update for anybody who is on our Instagram but happens to listen to this. I've been posting uh, a couple of photos of the collection sorting that's been going on. Yeah, it's cool. Um, And we seem to be getting a lot of interest about how I'm sorting all that and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. First of all, I want to thank my lovely girlfriend uh, for helping me. She's actually been really adamant that she wants to help me sort this, and it's awesome. Yeah, my pleasure. Absolutely love it. Yeah, you're the best. (laughs) Um, But I'm just speaking for her. She's not here. Oh, oh. Awkward. Um, <laughs> That's what we're talking uh, about. No, but we are basically play setting every set as best we can and then getting rid yep. of the excess. And uh, it's going really, really well. I keep posting <laughs> updates every once in a while. So if you're on our Instagram, you'll see how things go. Yeah. And I will reorder all of the sets in order once I'm done with them. I'm just not I'm not putting them together in order. So gotcha. that's why they're not people have like commented on the photos like they're not in order it bogs it bothers me or whatever i'm just like i'm sorry i can't i could but there's no point i'm gonna mix them all up again so like, yeah okay um Fair. but yeah so that's going well pretty stoked about yeah. that and there's a pile of cards right behind will right now that's all excess so good lord yeah there's like a solid ten thousand cards just chilling there that are about to get gone <laughs> For fuck's sake. it's all like I mean, I mean, that's all bulk. There is a pile of like bulk rares and stuff like yeah. that that I'm gonna get rid of too. But most of it's just bulk stuff. How much so. of this is is selling? You're selling all this. Uh, I was gonna try and go to Grand Slam and see about store credit. Um, yeah. Th- a lot of it is standard bulk though, uh, from ah. like most recent sets, which is makes sense. Sure. And they just have a lot of that. I could go to G2K and maybe try and get some store credit or something. We've had them sponsor stuff before too. They're yeah. nice people. Um, I'm also kind of tempted to donate though. Okay. to yeah, uh because yeah. there's a club at our local college winthrop uh yeah there's a magic club there and so really? uh and if i'm not mistaken you can like just donate cards there so i was thinking that oh, might yeah. be a better way to do it um yeah it would be nice to get a little store credit for it but like it's just bulk like it's not going to be worth much i might take rares over there or something yeah but that way i mean anybody interested in playing it can play it so so cool. yeah i'm gonna follow your lead on the uh oh the the gesture that you made but hey. anyway i think that's gonna wrap up this episode guys uh what has been a bit of a rambly one but it's been fun um yeah. hopefully you guys enjoyed it uh i think we're gonna get out of here though my name's kevin my name's will this has been it resolves <laughs>